Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, great introduction. Cheers for that. I'll dive in. Um, there is a disclaimer early doors in this presentation. Um, so today's presentation is created by myself, I'm Joe, and not by any of my other colleagues on the slide. So I did want to get that out of there early doors, a bit of um, housekeeping. It is very much my perspective, my opinion today that I'm talking about as opposed to the perspective of Kellogg's. So we're talking about retail media platforms today. We're talking about retail media agencies um, or the platforms agencies and everybody else in between. And the headline statement is that these guys are sitting on a data gold mine, right? So um, we are incredibly interested and um, keen to invest into this space. It's growing massively, you know, e-commerce massively growing pre-pandemic, during the pandemic and even still. My perspective and my experience tells me that they've got to get much, much better at how they mine that data and create true value for us as brands. What I believe is that the retail media platforms, the agencies, everyone in between, that leads the way in terms of creating best-in-class data partnerships will win the retail media gold race uh, or gold rush, which is, uh, which is currently kicking in. I'm going to hopefully give some insights today which will help shape what those best-in-class data partnerships might look like in the future. The first step, really, is to start, and I say this to agencies all the time, they've got to remember that their client contacts are brands, oh, sorry, not brands, are people and not brands. Um, you know, we've got our own internal challenges and objectives that we're trying to solve, and we need their help to build these propositions internally and to help us career, with, uh, you know, uh, progress with our own career aspirations and, and perform within our jobs. So let's look at what some of those challenges and objectives are. Number one, yes, it will always remain one of the primary objectives to drive performance, drive sales. What I would say is that historically that's probably been the number one, always been the number one. The reality is now I think big businesses are starting to think more broadly about what they can deliver from their investments. Um, learnings and insights is a massive one. You know, e-commerce is a growing space. You've got a 130-year-old company like Kellogg's. We heard from Diageo earlier on. They're even older. Um, we need to learn quickly about this space. We need the insights needed to innovate and to shape the future of food. Um, so if you can deliver that and help us deliver it, big tick. Breaking down internal silos. So I know there's a few folks in the audience who work for other big FMCG companies like Kellogg's. We have massive challenges, huge organizations, and the teams can become quite siloed. You know, we don't talk to each other enough and we want to have a more holistic approach which delivers value across the business, supply chain, innovation, uh, revenue growth management, marketing and sales, obviously. And if we can break those silos down, if you can help us break those silos down, again, big thumbs up. Incrementality. Our European president calls this his favorite word. You know, some of the brands that we have in our portfolio, huge brands, great awareness, massive existing rate of sale. If we want to grow year on year, the reality is that incrementality is the key to that. And you know, the likes of Quick Commerce, for example, Deliveroo are now here today, um, who can you, potentially are huge incremental opportunities for us. You're already off to a winning start there, and the time is now to capitalize. Long-term value, traditionally and historically the holy grail, um, but it is becoming a more prominent focus for all brands to look at the long-term value of investment into marketing. It's not just the short-term impact that this investment has. And then budget, and this is something, again, that I say to agencies a lot, you know, we don't have that magic money tree in the garden that we can wander up to and pluck whatever budget or cost we need to fund these new initiatives. You know, we're fighting internally for that, for our own slice of the brand pies, and, and we need the platforms and the agencies help to build these compelling case studies. And I'm going to talk about um, what I think uh, a compelling case study and a compelling business case would look like. To get there, I'm going to start with what the current approach is. So I'll break it down into uh, three different sections, three different phases. Pre-launch and selling. What we tend to get at the moment, this is the current approach. Impressions. They don't mean anything. They mean no more than the paper that they're written on unless they're broken down and we understand what they actually are. Who are we reaching? How often are we reaching them? Where are we reaching them? A standard reach number when it comes to retail media below the line advertising. It doesn't really hold water internally anymore. That's the reality. Media packages. So when we're investing into these platforms, quite often it's a bundle of options um, that we're presented with. 
We often don't like the look of one or two of those options, uh, but we don't have the opportunity to split it out, look at the menu of options uh, as an itemized menu, as I say. Um, and then data packages. So what I'm talking about today, and the good news is great. You know, we've seen uh, news in the last couple of weeks about some of these platforms uh, really thinking about how they can ramp up their data. But at the moment, it's budget plus. You know, they want sometimes twice the investment that we're actually putting into the media in order to get access to that data package. I'm going to talk about that more as I move through the presentation. So PO signed off, great. We're up and running. The activation's live. In flight, we get very, very little in regards to the view on the in-flight performance of our initiatives, and that's something that's got to change, which I'll talk about more in a second. We come to post-campaign, very light here, guys. Cost per impression, great, we can work that out, we know what we've invested, but again, because of the, uh, you know, the kind of ambiguity around that impression metric, we can't really understand the value of what it's delivered for us, and the same goes to sales, you know, the inverted commas return, attribution to the sales, platforms that we already sell products on, you know, what has this specific activation done to increase uh, our sales um, within, uh, within the platform and ongoing? So that's the current approach. Now I'm going to move on to what a best-in-class approach, in my opinion, might look like. Before I do, I'm just going to refer to this slide. And it's a visualization of a statement which is really doing the rounds in the e-commerce world at the moment. And that media platforms are starting to position themselves as retailers. Retailers are starting to position themselves as media platforms. Now... That first statement is quite well known. We know about Facebook and TikTok and the work that they've done on their platforms to introduce a shoppable element to their um, offering. But the reality is that the retailers are starting also to see themselves as huge awareness driving platforms now. You know, the traffic that they're seeing to their websites, I saw, I don't know if they're still doing it, but Asda at one point was selling programmatic advertising on their website, breaking the golden rule of retail platforms and driving shoppers away from their site. Um, I don't know if they're still doing that or not, but you know, it's a real reality now that these two are kind of shaping each other up and going after each other's opportunities and areas, really. And obviously, there's one gentleman who I didn't actually know would be indirectly sponsoring this event, so uh, that was before I'd made the slide, um, who obviously finds this very interesting and quite funny because you know, he worked out years ago and he now has one of the biggest companies in the world that takes advantage of this ecosystem of retail platforms and media platforms alike. So let's look at this best-in-class uh, partnership opportunities. Come back to that pre-launch and selling. Number one, benchmarks. I mean, you know, it sounds standard procedure. It really isn't. We're very rarely shown by the platforms what good looks like and what we should be shooting for in terms of our investment. Like I say, it's just those impressions almost kind of off the shelf. You know, what the, the performance metrics, which I'm going to talk about in a second, what does good look like? What should we be shooting for? Best way to deliver them, relevant case studies. Anybody who's worked brand side knows a case study of a tangible example of where another brand has done what they're proposing that you do. Fantastic example of what their value is going to deliver. Helps us with those internal sell-ins that I mentioned before. And another element of that is reporting templates. Show us up front how you're going to measure the impact of the investment that we make uh, and how we're going to go back to our internal stakeholders and report on the value of the investment that we've made into our brands. Massively important. Get those three right, you should get a PO. PO signed, fantastic. In flight, thinking back to the Spider-Man meme, when we invest big above the line digital budgets into the likes of Facebook, YouTube, and the like, we have the opportunity to optimize our spend in flight. Naturally, our campaigns perform better. We can upweight our investment behind the mediums which are working best for us. We can optimize our creative. We can change the audiences that we're targeting through viewing the in-flight performance and reporting of the campaigns. Retail media needs to catch up here. You know, I've had conversations with some of the big retail media platforms in the last couple of months denying us the opportunity to optimize media in flight. That's something that's got to change. And it's easily done as well, particularly if the campaign is long enough. And then post-campaign, a lot of metrics on here I think most people in the audience will be familiar with. I will focus on three of them. Path to purchase data. So we're talking about how shoppers buy products here. This is incredibly valuable to us. You know, if we can understand where and how shoppers, consumers have been exposed to media throughout their journey into the website, how many times have they been exposed to it, you know, which, which messaging, which creative, when uh, were they exposed, massively insightful for us and will help with that in-flight optimization. Repeat purchase rate, probably the most important one on the whole presentation. Think about that long-term value we're trying to drive. If you can show us whether a shopper becomes a lifetime shopper, has the loyalty on the back of the acquisition we make. When we're activating on this site, you know, 
world's your oyster really in terms of, well, world's our oyster in terms of how we can get more investment into that platform moving forward and not wait our spend on future initiatives. Basket analysis, Kellogg's we sell in three different categories, cereal, snacks, and um, salty snacks, Pringles. We're constantly trying to figure out who the right partners are, what our shoppers are buying alongside our products, and basket analysis can help us do that. We get it to an extent. Some of the folks who give it to us are in this room today, in this building today. These platforms, again, if you think about the likes of the quick commerce platforms, have got this insight, rough and ready, impulse shoppers, massively, massively valuable to us as a business. Um, and everything else on the slide is important as well, but I wanted to call out those three. I'm going to finish with four key principles, which I've kind of shaped up really. And I think that if you embody these, they'll enable you, the platforms, the agencies, everyone in between, to create a culture of data value proposition in future. Number one, critical to immerse your whole team in the power of your data. Nothing more frustrating. Go into a pitch from an agency, asking them about their performance, their reporting capability, their access to data, and the business exe development executive says, I need to go back to my technical team and ask that question. Everybody in the business needs to know the power of your data. Think about ways you can engage prospective clients. Some of the best um, agencies that I've worked with um, have reached me through targeting me on my own personal social channels with engaging, easy to digest content. Number two, we're talking about no guts and no glory. This one's key. It's a misconception, but it's certainly something we think internally when we don't get this data. Giving us this data will not lead to a reduction in investment into the channel. It'll actually lead to an increase. The reason for that, if we can optimize in flight, we can see which mediums are working. Remember, when we've tested initiatives, we've often used it on our biggest brand with the biggest budgets. We can see something works, we understand how it works, and we trust it. The door's open to the whole family of brands. We've got 15, 16 other brands that we can invest into if we know something works. Um, it's really, really critical. Number two, more guts needed here. Really important one, and again, I don't know who's in the audience, but there's people at the festival who need to listen to this. Comprehensive data packages should not be sold as a standalone service. The reality is that those days are long gone. It's not an additional source of revenue to generate. The future is that we get this data as a result of investment in the first place. And like I say, it's so, so valuable to the long-term partnership ambitions that you've got with big brand houses. Um, Amazon and Ocado, obviously Amazon, but Ocado are also leading the way here. They're a pure player. They've got the agility to do it. Honestly, the gains from integrating these packages into your internal offering will far outweigh the standalone cost that you can generate in the short term. So really, really important one there. Number four, final one for me. There's an opportunity here. We love as clients when platforms reach out to us and offer us opportunities to partner with them to shape our approach. We've got our own data education ambitions internally as well. And we don't tend to own our own platforms. We're dipping the toe into the water with direct to consumer, but it's tough with our price point and, and what have you. Um, there's a massive mutual benefit we can learn and you guys can build those case studies that will help you generate the future business interest from 360 to the initial selling material that I talked about at the start. That is everything from me. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to talk to anyone who's got a perspective or experience in this space. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. So, Joe, just a, a question for you. Do you engage in start, with startups as well in your role? Like, obviously, this is for agencies, but it could also apply for startups, presumably. And anything specific for startups? Yeah, we've always, we do try as hard. There's a lot of noise, uh, you know, hundreds of LinkedIn messages and emails every day from all agencies. It would be a full time job to review all of them. Yeah. We have retained agencies, but um, I know there are people here today that I've worked with with startups. If they can reach me at the right time and it's a compelling proposition, then I'll speak to anybody who's yeah. got their eye on the future. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks so much for sharing your insights. Super valuable and good to hear it from the horse's mouth. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Joey, we've got a beer over here for you.